Is this the queen of spades? Peace and blessings. So my video cut off. A phone call came through. So um, I'm like, I can't go anywhere with you. Like my parents will never allow that. And um, he's like, well, what if like they just bring you to the mall and they come too? like, we'll we'll all be there together. You know, I'm like, I can't. No, I can't. They're not going to allow that um, at most. I can probably like call you on the phone. And he's like, well, why don't you give me your number and I can call you? And I'm like, no, you can't call me. I can only call you. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew they they were not to play with like where that, that type of thing was concerned. So, <laughs> but, but I was liking the attention, I guess. Um, the attention, you know, from a, from a guy. Um, so I would, I would sneak and call him and, um, but then I could only be on for a few minutes and he's like, well, can you call me back again later on today? That was such a hassle. Like I was like sneaking and calling, um, because I knew I could not. And I'm sure it's a lot of y'all out there who have experienced similar. I'm in, <laughs> that goes to show you, like, watch your children, <laughs> watch your children, even in their young age, because <laughs> um, if they get an inkling to do something, they're going to do it. So, but also that teaches me like, like not to be so, you can't be too uptight um, with your children, protect them by all means, you know, keep certain you know, um, um, you know, stipulations, moderations, you know, applied, but at the same time, allow a little bit of leniency because I'm telling you, they're going to do what they want to do anyway, whether you have certain stipulations set up, it's best to maybe, um, partake in, whatever it is, you know, uh, whether it's having a little boyfriend, having a little girlfriend, um, why not just say, well, you know, you can talk to people, but I, but don't be talking about this, that, and the other, that's, that's too much, you know, or when I say you can go out, you know, with friends, but just know I'm, I'm going to be around, like I'm going to be there too somewhere. Um, I'm not going to be right up all on y'all but I'm going to be right there um, because I need to be there for your protection and safety. You're not just going to be out with anyone alone. Like there's ways to go about it. And I'm not saying that those types of options can be given at a, uh, for younger children, but at some point, I think those things should be taken into consideration because you never know, like you don't want them to, you know, sneak and do certain things, um, and in which they could get involved in things that could potentially hurt them, um, or scar them for life because they're so busy trying not to get caught and get in trouble by you that they're, you know, taking matters into their own hands to do what they want to do. You know, have, have some restriction, have some, you know, but also allow them the room to grow a little bit. Um, don't smother because you will end up turning them in a way where they're running to the very things that you're trying to protect them from. Take it from me. So <laughs> I couldn't believe I was doing this, but I was loving the fact that I could actually sit and just talk on the phone um, with, with the opposite sex, with a male. Um, I had never done this before. So this was new. It was scary, but at the same time, it was exciting and fun. Like I'm talking with a guy on the phone. Like, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> so, um, it went from there to, to me actually meeting someone within like, um, within the religion that we were in. And this person, um, few years older than me also, um, 
at some point we exchanged numbers and, and we started talking and this person um, became like, you know, my, my first love. And um, I'm not going to go much into that, but um, I started talking to him. I started, you know, I was actually able to see him because he's, you know, going to the same uh, places of worship, you know. Um, and then, um, we're also talking on the phone and things like that. And, um, you know, by this time, I'm, I think I'm still 10. Yeah, I'm still 10. He's a few years older. He's like, you just seem so mature to the point where I thought maybe you were like 12 or 13, you know, but you're 10. Like, (laughs) how's that possible? I'm like, yeah, I'm only 10, you know, but I was always kind of mature for my age. Um, it, it was the way that I carried myself. Um, you know how some older women, they'll see like the young girls today and they'll be like fast, you know, she fast, you know, that wasn't me. Um, I was like an older woman in a little girl's body, like just the understanding, the knowledge, um, the way that I carried myself, um, was that of a princess, you know, um, respectful, regal even. Um, and so naturally no one's going to think that, you know, that that person is a a 10 year old child, you know, but at the same time, I didn't dress grown. Like my parents had really major restrictions, like no makeup, no lipstick. You could wear a little lip gloss, you know, things like that. But, you know, hairstyles were even monitored, clothing, no tight fitting clothing, uh, very loose clothing. So as not to, um, you know, um, show too much or, um, you know, not to attract the opposite sex in, in a negative way, you know? Um, so there, there were many different stipulations put up. And, um, so I still, even though my thinking and, and my, um, my capacity to verbalize things, um, was probably a little ahead of my time. Um, I still looked and dressed, you know, like a young girl. So I guess the, the, um, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) I guess the, um, just the, the two differences together was kind of confusing to some, like, how do you, how do you act and sound and, and, you know, intelligent and mature, but yet, you know, you're a young girl, you know, so um, we, we, we were talking about different things, um, music, school, marriage, you know, in the future, all types of things. Um, we did not talk about grown things like, um, sex or anything like that. Um, it was like how young people should connect and relate with each other. Um, we clearly really liked each other. Um, and, and I think that we had love for each other too, in that regards, in that sense. But then as time, uh, came and, 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 and went, you know, circumstances happened where we ended up, you know, kind of like growing apart from each other, but we kind of always remained like friends, um, over time. Um, so, uh, that was some of my first experiences with like <laughs> the, the stages of when a young girl actually starts to become attracted to young boys, you know, um, <laughs> my mother would say things like, you know, she, um, Medina, you know, she's, she always you know, um, likes the intelligent ones, you know, that's a good thing, you know, (laughs) and, um, that still reigns to this day. Like, 
intelligence is such a sexy trait to me. Um, intelligence and the seeking of knowledge, constantly growing, not just verbalizing intelligence, but also having it in your actions too, in the way that you move about, in the way that you make decisions. Like, I don't know. Intelligence is just so sexy to me. Um, so that I'm going to stop right there because that basically explains like, uh, why, you know, my husband and I, like why I have my husband, um, why I'm married to my husband. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, when, when you grow up like that, then you don't, it's like you can be physically attracted, attracted to the person as well. But technically in life, how long will physicalities last, really? You know, we're just here for a lifetime, however long that is for each of us. But over time, things start to sag, things start to get out of shape. Like, I mean... You can be attracted to someone physically, but it makes the connection just that much more pure, that much more intense, that much more binding if the connection stems also from the spiritual, you know, attraction spiritually and um, attraction to that person mentally as well and morally. Um, their standards and how they relate to your standards, um, different things of that nature. So um, I think that now I'm just rambling, so <laughs> I'm going to stop there. And um, I want to talk next time on some of my experiences starting from 10 up into um, my teenage years. Now, <laughs> some of the things that, that I did experience, some of them were happy times, but then some of them were not so happy times. And it's like 10, 12, that's when things really started to make like a shift and transition. Um, into life learned lessons that I will carry with me and I will always remember. And from that, I will be able to not hold on to them with bitterness, but hold on to the lesson learned from them so that I can better secure and teach my children, my grandchildren, nieces and nephews, um, things of that nature. So I will go into more of my experiences next time. And um, in the comments below, let me know if you can relate, you know, um, either, you know, to having some, some teachers or some caretakers that um, really immersed you in, you know, the, the divine feminine um, love and nurturing. Like if you experienced that as a young child, whether it was from your mother, or whether it was from a caretaker or a teacher, um, and what that did for you, like how did that, how did that mold you into the person that you are today? And also, what were some of your first experiences with the opposite sex? Was it pure connection? Um, you know, was it, was it, a, was it a pure experience? Was it, um, something you wish that you've never, you never did? Um, or maybe you did too soon. Um, you started talking to the opposite sex too soon. Were you embarrassed? Were you nervous? Were you weird <laughs> and had to learn your way? Like, you know, I want to know. So comment below. And um, I look forward to speaking with you guys again very soon. Peace and blessed be.